It was now a little more than a week ago that uh, Nehemia Gordon almost had an asthma attack uh, uh, from laughing over someone's uh, interpretation of Hebrew letters and Hebrew pronunciation, and so much uh, has come in question about the pronunciation of the name. Uh, more than 6,828 times in the Bible, yod heh vav Hey appears, and Hemi Gordon, we have a number of questions that have come up on this, and so yeah, well, let's handle some <clears throat> of the basics on that. So one of the questions, I get this about once a week, and what they're asking me is they say, okay, in the vowels that you have in the Hebrew Bible, uh, the name is Yehovah, um, but that Hebrew letter vav isn't the v, it's a w. And, and I get this question about once a week from people, and um, actually, let me, can I read one? Yes. This is very typical of, of the type mm -hmm. of, of questions I'll get on this. Um, let me just pull this up in the email. And usually what, what they'll say is, they, they'll say, I thought you knew Hebrew. How can you be so stupid? Don't you know there's no V sound in the Hebrew language? And, and the ones who are maybe a little bit more respectful here, so they'll say it. This guy <laughs> says... He says, well, they start all with all with all due respect, and then they insult you. Right? Oh, they don't even bother with that. <laughs> he says, "I'm slightly puzzled with the pronunciation of wow. I admittedly, I am admittedly no Hebrew scholar. <laughs> I'll bet. But for years, I have been under the impression that the wow is pronounced with a hard V, because of influences from German translators, and that the wa is pronounced as a German wa, which is a V. And so here's what they're they're thinking that, or, or the the argument is that somehow the um, the letter the pronunciation of the sound V comes from German. Now, where do they get that idea? It's, it's not as far-fetched as it sounds at first, because many Jews coming from Europe spoke a language called Yiddish. Like my grandmother, who was born in Eastern Europe, she spoke Yiddish as her mother tongue, and Yiddish is, which actually means Jewish. Yid is a Jew in, in, in uh, German. Yiddish is a dialect of German. I'm told it's actually closer to Dutch than it is to German. Um, but it's mixed in 85% German, about 10% Hebrew, and 5% from other languages, Slavic and things like that. So, um, so there were Jews who spoke a Germanic language, Yiddish, and you could argue that they were influenced by the German language to lose the V sound in the Hebrew. But, but let's even back up before that. How do we know how to pronounce every, anything in Hebrew? How do I know the Hebrew letter Mem is really M? Maybe the Hebrew letter ma, mem is really ka or duh. How do I know? So what happened is scholars went around the Jewish world in the 1800s, and this is at a time when there were Jews living all over the world without communication with each other, and they documented how they pronounced every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalad, He, all of those were identical. It didn't matter if you were a Jew from Lithuania or a Jew from Yemen or a Jew from the mountains of Kurdistan. They all pronounced Hebrew the same. When they got to the sixth letter of the alphabet, they found two different pronunciation traditions. Some, some Jews pronounced the letter as V, as a V in English, but it was a Hebrew letter. And some pronounced it as a W, like a, a W in English. And I say like a W, it was not a W. I'll get people who hear, a guy writes to me and he says, but the W only came later, originally there was just a V. That has nothing to do with Hebrew. <laughs> the Hebrew language has authentically those two sounds. In the 1800s, some Jews v, some wa. In fact, most Jews pronounced it v, not just the German-speaking, Yiddish-speaking Jews, but for example, the Jews of Syria, who had been there since the time of King David, when they read from the Torah, they pronounce the letter, sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet as v. Now, that's very interesting, because when they speak at home to each other, they don't speak Hebrew. When they were at home in Damascus and Aleppo, before they were driven out of there, um, they would speak Arabic. Arabic doesn't have a V sound. But when, and it has that letter. The letter Vav exists in Arabic, and it's pronounced mm -hmm. Wow. And in fact, the pronunciation of Wow comes from Arabic. I was sitting recently with the uh, uh, member of the Academy of the Hebrew Languages. This is one of the top people in the world when it comes to the Hebrew language. And I asked him, I said, is and now there are five Jewish communities that preserve this wa pronunciation. One of them is the Yemenite Jews. Just five. Just five so, uh, small uh, uh, Jewish uh, communities. Of okay. all the Jews in the world, only five preserved the wa sound. Okay, and that's probably instructive in itself. It's interesting. They are. So there are Yem Yemenite Jews, Libyan Jews, uh, and a few other places like that. And, I, and they're all Arabic speaking. Um, and I said to, the, I said to this, this professor, I said, is it possible that this was influenced by Arabic? He said, it's not possible, it's 100% certain. This is one of the top experts in the world. He's mm -hmm. got no agenda, no ax to grind. 
Um, he's actually an Arabic speaker himself. And he's not pronouncing the name anyway. He's not it's pronouncing not the name anyway. He's talking about the Hebrew language. He, you know, he doesn't even know I'm interested in the name. I'm talking to him about the pronunciation of the Hebrew language. And then he showed me some ancient sources, which, are, which may, I'll get to in a minute if we have some time. It's quite fascinating. But basically what he's saying is um, you, can't, you can explain why a Yemenite Jew would say wa, because he's speaking Arabic, and in Arabic they have the same letter, and it's wa. But why would a Jew from Damascus who speaks Arabic as his daily language, why when he all of a sudden reads Hebrew in the synagogue, would his daily wa become va? He's clearly preserving something authentic mm -hmm. to the Hebrew language. Now, mm -hmm. that's only 150 years ago, 200 years ago. I wanted to go back further. So I okay. scoured the sources with his help. And one of the things I found is that in ancient Hebrew, we have um, a poet named Kalir in the 6th century in the land of Israel. So now we're going back 14, 1500 years, 1500 years, and this poet is writing, he's rhyming, and his rhymes, he rhymes two words, the word Levi, Levite, which is with a Vav, and the other word is Navi, prophet. Now, here's the really funny thing. I'll get these emails where they'll say, well, how do you not know? I thought you know Hebrew, Nehemiah. How is it you don't know there's no V sound in the original Hebrew language? So the one thing all Jewish communities agree, whether you're from Yemen or Damascus, or the mountains of Kurdistan, all Jews agreed that the V sound, the v sound does exist in the Hebrew language in the letter bet. The letter bet with a dot is B, without a dot is V. The example is Yaakov, Jacob. In English it's Jacob, but in English it's Yaakov, the, what we call soft bet. It's a soft bet is a v, a v sound. And all Jews agree that that V sound exists in the Hebrew language. The only dispute is about the W versus the V in the Vav the sixth letter of the alphabet. So um, this poet from the sixth century, from the 500s, he rhymes Navi with a soft bet, which everyone agrees on, with Levi. Now, according to the Yemenites, they don't pronounce it Levi, they pronounce it Lewi. And Lewi doesn't rhyme with Navi. He has a whole series of words which are va, 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 va. Actually, V, 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 and one of those is Levi. And there's no question whatsoever that 1,500 years ago in the land of Israel, the Jews pronounced that sound as a V. The interesting thing is 700 years later, this rabbi comes along named Ibn Ezra, and he was a famous poet. And he's criticizing this earlier poet from 700 years before, and he said, how could it be so stupid to rhyme Navi with Levi? Because in Ibn Ezra's Hebrew, Ibn Ezra spoke Arabic. And in oh. his Hebrew, it was Lewi. He doesn't understand how this guy 700 years before in Israel is rhyming Navi with Lewi. There you see the influence of Arabic. And no. you can go back all the way to the time of Ezekiel and show, for example, the word for back in Hebrew is Gav. Uh, and that Gav can be written with a soft bet or with a Vav. And, there's, and the only way that can be, happen is if the soft bet and the Vav have the same pronunciation. Now, I, I need to point out that yeah. the reason why you're seeing all this yeah. is that Nehemiah is not reading English works. The Hebrew works have been translated into English. Mm -hmm. He is reading these ancient things in handwritten Hebrew. Oh, yeah, these are Hebrew manuscripts. Yeah, well, they'll you never know, be translated you, you, in English. There's no you, point. You can show me a book from 2016 from a guy who doesn't know Hebrew, who thinks Hebrew, that the Arabs are Hebrews, and that's your source. If that's your source, the conversation's over. I'm showing you ancient Hebrew manuscripts. I'm showing you in manuscripts of the Tanakh where they're writing the word gav back Back, both with a vav and a soft bet and clearly in the time of Ezekiel they're pronouncing it that way so there's no question whatsoever if you'd ask Ezekiel to pronounce the name of God he would not have said Yehovah he would have said Yehovah